We're quiet now, but we won't be when we get going. Okay. Five, four, three, two, bam. Okay, uh, it's abiding in God's presence, that we want to abide in God's presence every day. We want God's presence to be here. And there's, we know God says he's everywhere. But the idea is that there's God's manifested presence. When you feel his presence, when you see him working, and that's what God wants us to, do, to have in our lives, where he is constantly in our lives, in our homes, in our everyday living, that we can feel his presence as we talk with him, as we live with him, that we know we're pleasing him by how we live. Because there's a lot of times you see, a lot of times the church would never say God's presence would fill the temple, and the priest had to get out because it was so heavy. They couldn't even abide in the presence of God because it was so heavy. I would love to be in a service like that where God's presence is so strong. I've seen God move. I've seen God heal. But to see it so strong where someone said actually could feel his presence was like a mighty cloud. They said, once I actually saw a cloud rolling through the church, that would be something. But anyway, uh, I want to see God's presence in my life every day. So we're going to get to some scriptures. And we're going to talk about our mouths because the words that we speak can determine whether we're in God's presence or not. Because God, you ever been in a room with somebody and they was talking so crazy and so out of order that you just had to leave the room? Sometimes God gets like that with us. When we start talking so negative and we start talking so defeat and so much doubt and God realizes, I, I, I just got to leave. So I just I hate that to happen. Is the light on? I think I'll be all right. We'll see. So here, here we go in Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your secret tent? Who may live in your holy mountain? The one whose walk is blameless, who does uh, what is righteous, who speaks the truth from, his, from their heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor and casts no slur on others, who despises a vile person but honors those who fear the Lord. So the idea is that we are not to talk about one another. We're not supposed to talk doubt defeat, and I do that we are, our mouths are under our control. Some people, they, you find like, man, they just say whatever is in their heart. The Bible says a fool utters his whole heart. Mm -hmm. You ever have people like that, they just say whatever comes to their mind. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. You got to learn to control your tongue. If someone makes you mad, sometimes the hardest thing is keeping your tongue to yourself. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that we get so used to just, you know how I am, girl, you know, I'll just say whatever I want to say, but that don't mean it's right with God, mm -hmm. and, you know, so we got to make sure that we control our tongues. Because I do say God wants to dwell, wants us to dwell in his presence. Amen. But I do that we can also Amen. live the kind of life that he wants to be with us. Amen. And so I thank God for that. I always remember um, somebody came to our house one time and they made mom so crazy. Mom said, you got to entertain that person that gave me a headache. I'm going to bed. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is that people can give you a headache by how crazy they talk. Mm -hmm. God doesn't want us to talk crazy. Amen. He wants us to talk faith, to talk positive, to talk victory. Mm -hmm. God wants us to use our tongue to have victory in our everyday living. Amen. So I want God's presence in my life. The words we speak helps us to remain in God's presence. In Luke 6, 45. Luke, uh, I always like Luke. He's very detailed when you read his books and stuff. In fact, he's uh, pretty bit longer than all the rest of them, but it's a good book. Luke 6, 45. I got it. Okay, go ahead and read it. Good men bring good things out of the good store of in his, in his heart. The evil men bring out evil things out of the evil men bring evil things out of his evil heart, evil stored up in his heart. For out of the for out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. And you notice it says the mouth speaks what is in the heart. To speak righteously our hearts must be full of God's word. So the idea is that People say, God knows my heart. Yeah, he knows your heart. And you can kind of know it by the words that they speak. And I was going to have an object lesson. I got caught up in something else. But I was going to I was going to have a container. And I was going to tell you what I had in it. I was going to say, I got orange juice in this container. And everybody said, yeah. And then when I would pour it, you would look and say, that's not orange juice. See, you can say what you have yeah. in you. Mm -hmm. But the words that you speak will actually tell people what you really have in right. your container. Right. So no matter what people brag about themselves, I'm this and I'm that. But you can tell by the words they speak. If a woman is contentious, you'll tell by her words. Mm -hmm. If a man is unfaithful, you'll find out by his words. Mm -hmm. Your words will tell people where you're at. Mm -hmm. That's why it's good to listen to people when they talk. Because mm -hmm. they don't realize that when they may be talking about something, you're actually judging them and seeing exactly where are you at. Mm -hmm. I've been at work. I've seen people talk so crazy. I said, I know I'm not going to be their friend. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be close to them because they'll be talking about everybody else or bragging about themselves or mm -hmm. whatever it is. And, you know, we're not going to be close. Mm -hmm. So I thank God right now because I want to guard my words. So what I want to do, I want to take his word and I'm going to fill myself yes. up with his word. Amen. I want him to pour into yes. me everything that's positive. Yes. That's why you keep reading and studying. Uh, Smith's Wilson Words had a dynamic healing ministry, but people don't realize that he actually spent hours in the word of God every day and in prayer. And when he would speak the word of God, it was so anointed, not just because he healed, but his words were anointed because he spent time in God's presence. If you're in the presence of God on a regular basis, you're going to have an anointing. Mm -hmm. but Moses was in the presence of God all the time. He had a Amen. tent of meeting Amen. and he had to talk to God all the time. And what's good that he talked to God all the time because he had a bunch of people that were talking negative and grumbling and mumbling mm -hmm. and they, they always threatened to go back to Egypt. They always wanted to get a hold of him and kill him. And so he had to spend a lot of time in God's presence and God would always encourage him and keep him. When you've got millions of people, we get mad because one or two people talk about us. But what do you do when you get millions of people want to, to get a hold of you and do stuff to you or, or leave you? So what I do is I thank God right now Moses understood the secret. I need to be in God's presence. Amen. And it, God's not hard to find either. Mm -hmm. You can get in any room in your house, in your car, outside. You can meet God anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, if I want to get a hold of you, I've got to find out where you're at. You get your number and hope it's not busy and all that. Mm -hmm. But with God, his arms are always yes. open to us all the time. So God says, when you don't spend time in my presence, it's your fault because I'm always accessible. Amen. You can always come to my throne whenever you need to come and you can come boldly. Amen. I know one guy was talking about praying. So I met people who prayed so softly and so passively. He said, be aggressive in your prayer. Mm -hmm. Let God know you mean what you yeah. pray. Pray aggressively. God likes people who pray aggressively, mm -hmm. who know that what his word says is that God, I'm going to get a hold of this word and I'm going to Get it out of you. Yes. I want you to save my kids. Now you ain't going to get no rest, God, until you save my kids. You ain't going to get no rest, God, until you allow me to prosper. Where I can yes. get the things in my life that I need. Because God desires of you to have. Amen. He says, I got it yeah. all. Amen. But you've got to let him know, God, I know you have it all. Amen. And I know it's for me. And so I'm not going to let the devil steal it from me. And so I'm going to wrestle it out of the enemy's hands. Amen. I've seen kids do that. They have a toy and say, give me it. That's mine. And they take it. Yep, yep. You ever do that? No. See, well, that's what you need to do with Satan. Try to take your blessings. Say, that's fine. Amen. Grab a hold of it and it's in the name of Jesus. Let go in the name of Jesus. I, and just stick it out with his hand. That's my blessing. Amen. Learn to stand on the promises of God. So a lot of people are oh, I'm sick. I'll just stay sick. Cause, you know, no, I ain't staying sick. No I don't like me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a wimp. <laughs> I don't like pain. Some people go, oh, oh the threshold of pain is really great. Mine's not. <laughs> so I just pray for you I mean, all the time. And I'm fine. Yeah. Last night I probably see because my hip was bothering me. I'm like, this ain't no good. I was in a chair, I was in the bed and everything. So you just pray for yourself. You fall asleep. I said, I thought about you. I was up three or four o'clock in the morning. I said, I could do this every day. I would be like Chuck, I'm gonna be able to sleep through the night. So it's learning to pray for yourself. You just realize that that's my promise. God promised me I would walk in health. I just thank God for that. And I got this one. Colossians 3, 16 and 17. If you got it, just raise your hand. If anybody got uh, Psalms 119, 11, okay. 119, 11, you, let me know. You can read it. Here we go. Colossians 16 and 17. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to, to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. So the idea is that our mouths are to sing praises to God, we're to proclaim his word, we're to talk positive, life-giving, encouraging, strengthening, words that's going to build, words that are going to make somebody feel great. Yes. That's what we're supposed to do. We have life. One thing we don't realize, he's given us abundant life, not just because of, for ourselves, mm -hmm. it's to be Give it to other people. Mm -hmm. And the, said, there's never, no man ever spoke like this man. It would be great to have ministers like that. You ever see a minister that time they speak, they're so anointed. Mm -hmm. You got to hear them every time they open their mouth. Mm -hmm. Now, you have certain ministers that you like. Who touches your heart every time you hear them? Have, Priscilla? Have. Priscilla Shaw, Michael Todd, James Newberry. So you got quite a few. Yeah. And every time you listen to them, you feel better, don't you? Yeah. And I bet you they spend a lot of time in prayer, too, don't they? Sure. Because when you put a, your time with God... God will reward you by giving you his anointing. One minister, he was he said, I never preach God's word unless I spend a lot of time with God. I said, God, until you anoint me, I ain't speaking. Mm -hmm. And one time he's supposed to be going on, he ain't went on yet. And so what's he waiting on? He said, I'm waiting for God to, 
to touch me. He said, I ain't going out there until God you anoint me. Amen. And God finally touched him. He said, I feel the presence of God. I'm ready to give the word. Amen. Why? Because he said, these are God's people. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to speak out of my own intellect. Right. I want them to receive from God right. what God wants them to have. Amen. So that's what a minister has to have that men mentality. You've probably seen ministers that hardly ever pray, hardly ever study the word. They just got a little outline and just go through the outline and just read it. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. If I don't make it, I'm telling God, God, I was in your presence. You didn't annoy me, but I was thinking it. Mm -hmm. So I went, God, because I said, you guys are God's kids. This is God's word. God, this is your spirit. I'm God's vessel. It's Amen. all about God. Amen. And so I want God to get the glory in that. Amen. God said, Vic, you guys, I did it one time. I, I was busy one day, and I, get, I had a real good outline. So I said, it would be good. I was so dry. <laughs> and I realized, I don't care how good it is, if God's anointing is not on it. That's right. One guy said, you was... He was long and he was boring. And I, I said, you're right, I was. I knew it. I said, I'll never let that happen again. I, I said, how could I miss with this? That's why I told the Lord, I said, God, how could I miss with this? God, let me know. You can't. <laughs> Psalm 119.11, who has that? I do. Okay. Thy word have I hid in my mind, my heart, that I may not sin against thee. Where did you hide it at? In my heart. There you go. It's a heart thing. God's after our hearts. If he's got your heart, he's got you. You know, say, oh, she's my heart. Oh, my Lord, my grandkids, my heart. My, because that's where your treasure is. Yes. So I said, God, I put all my treasure in you. I love you. I serve you. I wake up in the morning. You're there. I go to bed at night. You're there throughout the day. Pay me by yourself. It says you're God. Sometimes I only talk to two or three people for the whole day. And I'm sitting there thinking, but God, you're always there. That's why I like Bible class. I actually get to see people. Mm -hmm. you know, Sunday you get to see people, but sometimes yeah. through the week you don't get to see anybody. Right. And so the idea is that you just want to. That's why I say I don't understand why people don't want to go to church. It's fellowship. Mm -hmm. You get to bond with people Amen. when you go to church. You get to yeah. care what they care. Find yourself praying for you because I know what you have needs. You say I have needs for this or that. I've been thinking about your car. Like it was my my car. Oh. I keep asking, how's your car? How's your car? He goes <laughs> because you care about what people are going through. You don't, you want to see them suffer. But the idea is that I thank God for the fellowship that we have. Amen. Um, when you had your movie day, who was there? The Bible class. Mm -hmm. That's the core. <laughs> our church got some good people, but the core of our church is the Bible class. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's those that love the Word of God and that are, you know, they're supportive of one another. I know you couldn't be here because you, the van, yeah. the idea, but we missed you. Mm -hmm. But Crystal's having the time of her life right now. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. Words of faith agree with God and brings God on the scene. And witnesses God's power. God wants to see his power in the church. Who's got Mark 11? Okay, can we go ahead and read that? Tell, I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen. It will, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Amen. Have faith in God. Amen. Whoever says unto this mountain, who, whoever, yes. not the apostles, mm -hmm. not the men, it's whoever, my children, mm -hmm. I'm your father, I'm the father of all the body yes. of Christ. Whoever says unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. I remember there's a woman, she had a big old mountain in front of her house. She said she had to go hours around that mountain to go to town and different things. She said, God, I'm just going to pray that you just remove that mountain. Mm -hmm. God, pray that you remove that mountain. God knew they built a tunnel through that mountain. Wow. <laughs> it wasn't instantly, but she kept praying. Mm -hmm. and, they said, and, that was, and they ended up building a tunnel through that mountain. They didn't remove the mountain, but they mm -hmm. solved her, her mm -hmm. dilemma. And so, you see, when you pray, sometimes you never know God, how God answers. That's right. God answers the way you don't right. think you're going to answer. Right. Here's how she's praying God removed that mountain. Right. What's wrong with her? Mm -hmm. Never don't know. Build a tunnel through mm -hmm. it. And some people are afraid of tunnels. Anybody here afraid of tunnels? Because they're afraid of, uh, I think Tula. Is Tula afraid of tunnels? Yes. <laughs> what, what is she afraid of? Is that the mountain's going to just crash in on them or something? Mm -hmm. Bridges. <laughs> but there's people afraid of elevators. Afraid of tunnels, afraid of sitting in the backseat of a car. Remember that woman I told you I went to her apartment and she, would, she never shut the door for a bathroom because she's afraid of something happened to her she got out of the bathroom. That's, that's, what's the deal with that? But, that, but fears are not always logical. Mm -hmm. 
But I did, I thank God right now, I might have fears of basic stuff, you know, mountain lions, type of things, but I ain't afraid like get in my car. I know God's gonna take me where I wanna go. Right, right. And if I don't make it there, I know where I'll go. That's I'll be right. with him. That's but right. I remember before I got saved, I was afraid to get in the car, I'm afraid somebody's gonna cross the line and hit my car and kill me, and I'll be in open eyes in hell. God said, God said, you don't belong out in the streets, you don't belong out in the world because you're afraid all the time. But I thank God right now since I've been saved, my life has been so good. Amen. Uh, me, Chuck, and Kathy got saved. We came back to the Lord Jesus probably what, 22, 21? So we've been together all that time. So we've seen a lot of things, what God's done. But it gets to me when people are so happy in church. Mm. And the backside. You've probably seen it too. Mm -hmm. You've seen it too. Where mm -hmm. People, they're happy, they're singing, they're God's blessing them. Yeah. And whatever reason, they're drawn back into the world. And one guy told me, he says, the happiest I've ever been was when I was in the church. I felt like saying, well, come on back. Right. But Satan gets such a hold on them. It's like they can't make it back. And I said, but I thank God that I've never backslid. I've got weak, but I've never backslid. Right. You know, so I just thank God. I would keep praying for those that aren't here now, that used to be here. God's got sheep scattered. Mm -hmm. I said, God, bring them back. Bring them home. From the north, bring them back. From the south, from the west, and east, bring your, your sheep back home. Right. I'm praying that. Amen. And when they come back home, we want to feed them. Amen. So we got some ministers that can feed them the word of God. Amen. Okay, back to our notes here. <coughs> and I like this, John 12, uh, 14 and 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works yes. than these shall he do. Yes. Because I go un unto my Father. To very truly. Now, sometimes I said, now I'm going to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Now, why do you say that? I'm telling you the truth right now. Are you listening? Why? Because it seems so fantastic. Mm -hmm. It can't be true. You're going to do greater works mm -hmm. than Jesus? Greater. How? Mm -hmm. Well, one thing about it, there's more of us. Mm -hmm. And so we can reach a lot more people. Mm -hmm. and, we can, and one thing about it, we can bring the gospel of salvation. Mm -hmm. Amen. So when we preach to people, they can actually get saved. Mm -hmm. He healed people. Yes. And he preached to yes. people. Yes. But when the Holy Ghost came, and now the word of God is out there, now people are getting saved mm -hmm. and are being born into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Man, we have that message. That mm -hmm. you can preach the message to someone and say, can you lead me to Yeah, I can lead you to Jesus mm -hmm. right now. Isn't it good to know? Amen. Every one of us Amen. can lead somebody yes. to Jesus. Yes. Yes. So all you have to do, and you can lead them in the sinner's prayer, realize that you're a sinner, you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you accept him as your Lord and Savior, now you need to be baptized in water and be baptized in spirit. You can lead them to the Lord. Amen. That is a message he's given to yes. us. And if they need physical healing, you lay hands on the sick Amen. and they'll recover. Yes. So he's given yes. us all the things that we need to bring people to the yes. kingdom of God. But we have to walk in that. Amen. We have to believe that Amen. for ourselves. And there are yes. people that are doing that. I've seen the guy doing that. He was in, I think, Europe somewhere. And he was laying hands on people and he was getting them healed. Because he believed what the word of God said. Yes. I remember some of the people yes. that were coming, and some guy in Africa, he was a young African, he was healing people. And somebody said, you can't do that. Mm. He goes, what are you talking about? He said, you just got saved a while ago. You can't lay hands on, but they were getting healed. Mm -hmm. But people will try to bring you a ne negative message mm -hmm. that make you not to believe. But you got to trust what the word of God yes. says and not what man says. Amen. I always remember when Kirk Patterson got saved and he was all happy. He said, I'm really excited in God and I feel the power of God. And he was talking. And so was, some saint was talking to him and he got done. He, he said, I'm strong in the Lord. When she got done, he goes, I'm weak. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm strong in God. He said, you can't say that. I said, I'm weak. Mm -hmm. So sometimes saints would try to make you feel defeated and weak. But we're strong in God because the Holy Spirit is in us. Yes. He just wants us to believe what his word says. That's why he says, that's true what I'm saying. Listen mm -hmm. to me. It may sound astounding, but I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. Can Jesus lie? No. no. If Jesus said greater works than these, he meant it. Mm -hmm. It's just we have a hard time believing it because it seems so, man, how? The Holy Spirit working through us. Mm -hmm. yeah. The words of faith agree with God. Do you agree with God for your physical body? Yes. Mm -hmm. He said he would hit by his stripes. You're, you're healed. healed. Do you believe it? Yes. Okay. My father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. All that he has, he, ha he owns it all. Yes. And he says, I'll give it to you. Do you believe that? Yes. That if he has it all, Mike, that you can prosper, that you can be successful? Yes. You believe that? I believe that. Okay, yeah. then. Then you have to stand on it. But the devil tries to steal your blessings. Yes. What are you going to do about it? Yes, he won't. Leave on any of them. You have to lay hands on him. Yeah. Slap him around a little bit. He said, this is mine. You ain't taking mine. I'm standing on the promise of God. Okay, next scripture. 
1 John 5, 14 and 15. You guys are doing good. We're rolling really good right now. Nobody got that one? I'll get this it. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. Wow. Mm -hmm. First thing, I got this confidence. Mm -hmm. Well, if he hears me, mm -hmm. if I'm praying according to his yes. will, yes, yes, you know what yes. Saying? God wants you to save, uh, save Buster. Mm -hmm. Is this a desire to save Buster? Mm -hmm. It's God's desire to save everybody. Mm -hmm. So if he wants to save everybody, is Buster part of everybody? Yes, yes. yes, he is. So now it's on you. I would say, I'm praying God to save Buster. Mm -hmm. So Buster, you ain't got a chance right now. You may <laughs> fight it, you may resist it, but you're going to be overwhelmed yes. and overcome. Pro grandkids, God, you're going to save all my grandkids. Yes. Every one of them. Jesus. Claim them all and say, yes. I don't care what they're doing now. I'm trusting your word, Thank God. You, Lord. I mean, you remember you were sitting before God got a hold of you. Mm -hmm. Remember yes. some of the stuff you were doing? Yes. People said, are you ever going to get saved? But then God got a hold of you one day. Amen. Corey, look at you. You know all the stuff you was doing. But somebody was praying for you. I wasn't me. But somebody was praying for you. <laughs> and, and you got saved. Look at you. Now, who loves God more than you? You love God with all your heart. As your life blesses, you give your life to God. Blessed. He gave you a new family. You know, you was my cousin, but I didn't really know you that well. And now I see you all the time, whether I like it or not. Because God <laughs> is, is blessing us and he's keeping us. Because we're a family. You know, that's what family's all about. And like I said, I pray for you. I pray for Antoinette. I get a great joy out of you. You, you are a fun person. I would have known that if you hadn't gotten into the church. I want to get to know Fred better, too. But one of these days, because him and Cynthia always tickle me because she seems so... Laid back and stoical. Yes. But I don't know her like you do. But she probably likes to laugh and cut up too. Mm -hmm. But Fred lets you know right off the bat the kind of person he is. Sure <laughs> he loves being your friend. I know that. Uh, we are to speak words of life. What we speak. The more you're in the word of God, the more you can speak words of life. Mm -hmm. I always think of Cassie. It's our Proverbs 18.21. Anybody got that? I got it. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. You ever see people that love to talk? Mm -hmm. Now, if you love to talk, make sure you love to talk life. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's people that are very negative, mm -hmm. always, they're always talking about all the defeat and all the darkness and all the negativity. I don't want to hear their talk. But when you start talking positive and you're uplifting and you're making me feel good and you're talking, God can do this and God yes, can do that and all things yes, are possible, yes. I want to hear you talk. Amen. Yeah. Don't worry about this church. God's going to bring people in this church. Yes. God's right. going to bring leaders. He's going right. to bring teachers. Right. He's going to bring children. Yes. He's going to bless. I want to hear yes. stuff like that. Yes. He's going to heal. He's going to deliver. Yes. He's going to do a mighty work. Yes, and we're going to go out. We're going to evangelize. Yes. We're going to see Jesus. people come off the street. Yes. People are going to get delivered from drugs and alcohol yes. and the darkness of life and hopelessness. God's going to work mighty. Yes. I want to hear that kind of Thank stuff. You, Why are you speaking like that? Because the word of God says yes. he can do all things. And I'm believing yes. God can do all that. Thank you, Lord. I'm not going by what my eyes see. I'm going by what the word of God says. Yes. And that's what God wants out of his people. So that's why I'm full of God's word. So when I, when you just bump me, the word of God spills out. Yes. Yes. I want to be so full of God. You yes. bump me with my word. Bump me again. Word's going over there. <laughs> yes, right. God wants to be full of his word that we're overflowing. Yes. Fill my cup, Lord. Yes. I lift yes. it up, Lord. Yes. You know, God yes. wants us. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes. <laughs> yes, God. Yeah, you know. It says Proverbs 18 and 4. The word of a man's mouth are as deep water, and the, the will spring. Of wisdom as a flowing brook. Hmm. Okay. And Antoinette, you get James uh, 3 and 2. We'll be ready for you. Okay. okay. Sometimes the word of God is like deep waters. Deep waters are waters that are they're not noisy and they never run out. Mm -hmm. And they're refreshing. The words that we speak, that you, you, at any occasion, whatever I need, you got to work for me. Yeah. yeah. You know, because you're so full of God's wisdom, yes. so full of God that no matter what, marriage, I got a word for you. Mm -hmm. You know, my relationship with other people, I got a word for you. I'm feeling hopeless, I got a word for you because I got something that's going to refresh in you, something that's going to bless you, and that's what we have to have. And I'm, the wisdom of God will speak through us that no matter what the need is, God gives us a word for that. Amen. And we always talk about Teresa, no matter what goes on, she sits there. Uh -huh. And I think I'm praying really good until I hear her speak. Uh -huh. That's why I think God, God says, 
We need each other. Yes, we do. God said, if God said, if I gave it all to you, you'd be getting, you know, you said, I don't need nobody. Mm -hmm. But I saw, I could tell. I pray, I think I'm praying really good, and she comes up, and God's got something just specific. That's right. That's she got a specific word. Mm -hmm. And I listened to it, and I said, thank you, God, for her ministry. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think if Reverend does stuff, I don't, the candy you fix, Kathy's like, we don't have no candy for the kids. He, three hours of toiling. <laughs> no reward. Just doing it because your heart That's says right. to do that. Yeah. I come here at 3 o'clock. What is there working on the coffee mm -hmm. table over there getting stuff ready for it just in case anybody wants mm -hmm. people are doing stuff. Nobody will be rewarding you for that. Right. You're doing it from your heart. Yeah. Right. Every little thing. God sees the little things. Right. Sometimes we think, I want to do something big for God. Do little things. That's right. It's the little things that people don't really pay attention to that make the big difference. Yeah. Amen. I just thank God for you guys are workers. Amen. You know, I, I can say, I'm home watching TV. So you guys might be doing something <laughs> mighty for God. I just thank God for that. I do stuff, but I, I'm glad I'm not the only one doing stuff. Sometimes Chuck's here doing stuff. Nobody knows what he's doing, mm -hmm. but he's doing it because of his heart for the church mm -hmm. and for the Lord. Amen. God wants us to be workers. Yeah. That's right. As Christians, our words should always be positive and life-promoting. Our words should, number one, be encouraging, motivating, mm -hmm. uplifting. You have those kind of words? Mm -hmm. Do you know anybody like that? Say, I'm feeling down. I need to talk to somebody. Is there somebody that crosses your mind that you know is going to encourage you, that's going to motivate you? Somebody you know is going to be uplifting to you? Because there's people we know like that. I love talking to Kathy. Whenever we get done talking to her, she, oh, she's so uplifting. I love talking to Reverend. Every time I talk to her, I feel motivated to go out and do great things for God. Mm. There's people like that. I love talking to Chuck. He's just, he's really laid back, but when he gives you words, it just motivates you. God says, I want people like that in the body of Christ. Yes. That's because the word of God is in you. And as a Christian, you are very positive because your words are God's words. And God wants us to speak his words. Amen. Number two, you're enlightening. You're guiding. You're instructional. People say, I don't know what to do. And sometimes you go to somebody and they say, I'll tell you what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And they're instructional. And they're going to help and guide your life with the word of God. Amen. And they're going to continue to just be there for you. Yes. They're going to allow enlightenment to come. You say, I feel so like I don't know what's going on. I mean, I'm in confusion. I'm in darkness. I feel like I'm in a no man's land. And you say, I got a direct word from God for you. Mm -hmm. Something that's going to light your path. And that's what God wants out of us. Because the word of God is in us. It says the entrance of his word brings light. Yes. And so I read his word. I just keep, I'm getting lit up. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, people say, I'm going to light you up. God wants to light his people up right now. Amen. I know some guy works, take care of my light work. Said, you his light work? I said, yeah, I'm about ready to light him up. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea is God wants us to be full of his light. How is it full of his light? It's full of his word. Guiding somebody, instructional. If you can't guide your own life, you can't guide nobody else. Amen. Every time you're, you're always in trouble, you're always making bad decisions, you're in debt all the time, you know, people are asking you all the time, mm -hmm. you know, sitting the government's wanting to find out what your address is, what's going on, and you found out, I've got some instructions for you. Mm -hmm. Your wife left you 50 times, and yet you're going to get somebody marital advice. No. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You see people like that. Let me tell you about marriage. Said, You've been married five times. Shut up. Mm -hmm. The idea that God said, no, be different. They all died. Mm -hmm. but if they're living, they just want to be with you because you don't want to clean your house. <laughs> you don't want to cook. Mm -hmm. you know, you, you're never there for them. There's some people that want to get married. So why do you get married? You don't even want to be a wife. Why mm -hmm. do you, you don't even want to be a husband? But said, when you marry somebody, your life is different. Mm -hmm. I remember my wife used to tell me, she says, I love you more than you love me. And she was telling the truth. And then we got married. <laughs> and I said, say it now. She said, okay, couldn't say it. I was holding back. You know, sometimes you have a bad experience. You don't give it all to the next person. You can, and you have to really let go of the bad experience and just let them have it all. Amen. And then she finally she goes, can't say it. Hmm. Like you and Krista, who loves you? You love her more than she loves you? Or she, not each other say about to say. Oh, yes. See, that's what it's supposed to be. You see, Chuck don't look through the door for Kathy. You know, being all nice. Cooks for her. He does nice things for her. You do that because you love somebody. You want to treat them. So that's what you do. When you love somebody, you want people to know. I love her. And I'm going to let people know I'm, I love her. Sandy would sit over there. And I would go sit with her. And she had she never seen me for 10 years. I just got off the piano. So, okay, you'd be all happy just to see me. No. That's when you know somebody loves you because nobody else is happy to see you, but she was happy to see me. <laughs> I said, see, that's the way she was. And she comes and said, people in this church don't know you're my husband. Because I would sit up here and she would sit back here. And I'd start sitting with her. I'm going to skip with pastoring. 
Cause she, he's like, you ain't, you ain't Vic's wife. He goes, see, she got on me for that. Cause I never, you know, I'll see her at home, but I had to realize, see how you guys sit together and know you, you guys are married. Okay, anyway, anyway C, uh, three, C, three, be peace, all right? Speak words of peace, words of comfort. People need to be comforted. Don't criticize people. Mm -hmm. You know, play the devil's advocate. Sometimes you talk to somebody, I, I need to talk to you. And they're always taking the other person's side. Say, I just need to have a sounding board. Mm -hmm. Some people are not very good sounding boards. Mm -hmm. But I just, I just need, let me vent, let me talk. Mm -hmm. And then after I get it all out, I feel a lot better, and then you can start to counsel me. Mm -hmm. I you ever talk to somebody say, I'm not talking to them anymore, because they were not very good sounding boards. Mm -hmm. I haven't needed one for a long time, but I've had them. And uh, they were, that's why I say, I don't want you to take the other person's side. I always want to vent. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, words of comfort. Uh, four, be loving and caring. Well, do you think you're loving and I caring? Am. Just like them boys you was talking about. They aggravate you, but you I love do. them, don't you? Yes, I do. And you're caring. Christians should be loving and caring. Uh, number five, your words should glorify God, honor God, agree with God. Mm -hmm. So these are what God wants. I need to know his words so I can agree with him and speak these words to other people. Mm -hmm. We must submit ourselves to God, including our tongue, and resist the devil. The hardest thing for anybody to overcome is their tongue. Amen. You remember when Amen. your tongue was out of order? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you were saying things about people, talking about people, teasing people, making people angry. It's overcoming things. Learning to use your tongue to make people feel better, mm -hmm. not worse. When Doug was on the world, Doug was very good with his tongue. I mean, he told me one time this guy in his department got on his nerves. Doug wrote that guy so bad he got out of the department. Because <laughs> Doug was good. He's just witty. And he, that guy just couldn't compete with Doug's tongue. I always say this. I mean it. I wouldn't want to argue with a woman. Women are too quick for me. I've seen Brandy, I've seen different ones that act. Kamara's sitting there like, they bring up stuff in the past, like, how do you remember all this stuff? And it's right, you know, and you, you're free, you say something, I got something else, and something else. I said, I just walk away. That's the best thing to do, isn't it? If you can't, I don't like arguing anyway. I remember my wife called uh, you and said, your brother's mad at me, remember that? God. He was saying stuff I didn't like. It was true. But I just walked away. Mike, you ever walk away from Crystal? Yes. <laughs> I'm not saying it's been recent, but just, when you, why do you walk away? To keep, keep our, peace. Keep our love strong and everything like that. Yeah, our love is strong. Around. The further away I get from you, the stronger our love. <laughs> 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 but, that, but that's something you have to do. Yeah. But the idea is that I want to submit myself to God and I want him to use me and to resist the devil, because the devil will get you to say stuff that you don't, and you, you can't get it back. Mm -hmm. You stupid! When she say that, I only did that once. I raised kids. I, I called one of my kids stupid one time, and I felt so bad, and I apologized. I never did it again. And you probably know which one it was. Which one do you think it was? Take a stab at it. Brandon Randall. You said Randall, and you said Brandy. You're both wrong. Mm -hmm. Keith. That's what you said. Oh. Caught her stupid. And as soon as I did, the Holy Spirit says, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. And when the Holy Spirit says, you're wrong, what do you do? Apologize. You apologize. Mm -hmm. I don't even think she even remembers. I think she kind of got really, because I learned something from that. Don't let yourself get so angry that mm -hmm. your tongue gets out of control. Because you can't get it back. Amen. People are like, you, you ever said something, wish you never said it? Mm -hmm. I think we've all said something, I wish I've never said that. Mm -hmm. But you can't get it back. What are you, what are you talking about? Hey. Yep. You can't get it back. What are you saying? Hey, everyone here. Really? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> the word devil means slanderer. When you slander your brother and your sister, whoever it may be, you're doing the devil's work. The devil likes to slander something good. I don't have to do it. Coy's doing enough for both of us. Mm -hmm. Learn to slander somebody because you're angry or you something new. She said hi. <laughs> that's where that's ever happened. Okay, and but the idea I think right now, Satan means adversary or an accuser. 
So we don't accuse one another. We're not against one another. We don't slander one another. We don't gossip with one another because we're family. I love you. You love me. If you made me mad, let me pray for you. Let me deal with it. But my job is not to pull you down. I'm going to help you up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to promote you, support mm -hmm. you, help you. We're not to be one against one another. There's no strife here. There's no envy here. And we're doing good now. But when you got a church where people are getting along really well, mm -hmm. what do you have to be on guard for? Because we see it. Who else sees it? Jesus. Satan sees it. And so he wants to bring confusion. He wants to bring turmoil in the midst of peace. And so we got to be on guard. If we're not on guard, it can slip in on us before we know it. He's doing his mighty work. So I just pray, God, right now, be a watchman on the wall. Yeah. Keep watching. Keep praying. And we, because we need to go. I always tell you about the women's retreat. Guard it. Because the devil will try to disturb it. And so right now he's watching. He's waiting for weaknesses. And so, you ever remember Jurassic Park? The raptors were trying to fences, looking for weaknesses. Satan does the same thing. He's trying, trying to find a weakness. And once he finds a weakness, he's coming in. So we got to be on guard for that. I'm going to put my glasses away. Here we go. We're doing really good. I'm about done. Pretty Well, maybe. Okay. James 3 and 2. Internet, go. We are some stuck up in so many ways. Anyone is never involved. Okay, Internet. Read loud like you're talking to quit the house. Here we go. You know we are some in so many ways that anyone is never involved in what he said. He is a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. Can you imagine that? That you don't offend with your tongue? You know what? In my whole life, I've never offended anybody with my tongue. You believe that? Mm-mm. Guys, you look right at me right here. Mm -hmm. Offended me? Mm -hmm. I remember the time I, remember the time I hung up on you? Oh. <laughs> she was saying something on the phone I didn't like. I hung up on her. Wow. I was, at, I was at 20, 18. Anyway, anyway I, did I call you back? I called her back and apologized. Mm. What could you have said to make me that mad? I, I don't even know what it was. I've never hung up anybody in my life but you. <laughs> and you know what? People that you love can make you mad the fastest. That's yes. true. Yes. So Coy and your nephews really love you. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can mad at him all the time. But that oh. is that... We love people. We expect something out of them, but sometimes when they don't have your back or they don't say things that you think they should say, we can get so mad at them. Mm -hmm. And I have to realize that now I, I got to make sure that I don't lose my temper, especially to my family. Mm -hmm. So I've got a better. I'm, I'm a lot better. James uh, 3 and 8. Who's got that one? But the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Hmm. We need the Holy Spirit to help control the tongue. No man can control the tongue. But we need the Holy... We laugh, Scott. Are you about ready to read that, Wesley? Okay. Well, Chuck, why don't you read the next one? Now, Malachi. Well, that's quick, Betty. You get that word, if you will hesitate, she's a fast draw, buddy. But that is that. It's learning to let God have our tongue. I'm a lot better at it, but I got to make sure. Because sometimes you can sin without meaning to. So, I didn't, so that was not my purpose. Sometimes you can say something so innocent. And someone's offended by it. Mm -hmm. But when you purposely say stuff to offend people, you got to guard against that. <coughs> and that's it. You, you got I, I know you don't wear any hats. I would say, like, Chuck, why don't you wear any hats? It's because your head's too big. Mm -hmm. And, you see, and you know, see, people, now, aren't you trying to hurt somebody so when you do that? Mm -hmm. You said no. She said, mm -hmm. saying you have big heads. She said, that's all right. Okay. <laughs> but, but that is. <laughs> But that is that people can say stuff that's going to be really offensive, yeah. and they try to be offensive. How much weight have you put on? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that? You know that's offensive. Mm -hmm. I remember as at work, I, I read a guy I worked with, he called some woman over and said, hey, Susan, come here. I said, what? I said, have you gained weight? I'm like, I feel so little. I said, you don't call a woman over and ask her if she gained weight. Right. I said, how stupid are you? Probably said, you're stupid. <laughs> Okay, go. Who got the next scripture? Okay, Chuck, Malachi. <laughs> then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on that day that I, that I make them my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. 
then, he, then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. When you're in your house, God hears what you're saying. When you're in time you're talking, he hears you. And, he said, and they were talking about the Lord, and he said, I hear them. He said, happy. They're mine. Mm -hmm. God said, what? Well, I'm happy. They're talking about me mm -hmm. and my goodness. And they're talking about they love me and how the blessing I am to them. And it makes me feel good when you're talking about me. If I hear you eavesdropping, you talking about me. Oh, I just love my pastor. He said, that's going to make me feel good. Mm -hmm. I wish he just set himself down. That ain't going to make me feel good. So it's good to hear when God said, I hear my kids talking about me, and it's good stuff. Yeah. And he said, they're mine, and I love them, and I got yeah. a reward for them, and God loves them. Because when you're talking about the Lord, he's listening to you. Amen. He said, you think God hears every word that comes out of your mouth? Mm -hmm. and good, you know, how does he do that? There's over, there's like seven point some billion people in the world, and he hears every word that comes out of our mouth? Because he's God. Mm -hmm. He's everywhere, and he hears all things, Amen. and it's being recorded. And he said, I never said that, and God said, uh, April so and so, what year you said this to so and so, it's all recorded. Isn't that good to know? But one thing about it, I think I'm saying good stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm saying anything bad for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew 12, 37. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be, you will be condemned. And the verse before that says, Every idle word he knows. Mm -hmm. So you're saying, just, I'm, I didn't mean anything by it, then why did you say it? Right. So God knows every word, and you'll be justified or you'll be condemned by the words of your mouth. So learn to control your mouth. Amen. It said, your mouth is out of order. Your mouth ever been out of order? Mm -hmm. Many times. And the Holy Spirit like, said, okay, you got to pull you to the side, work on your mouth a little bit, because your mouth's out of order. No maintenance work taken care of. God's a great maintenance man, and straighten up me, straighten me up. I repent. I confess my sins and I move on. Isn't it good that he makes it so easy like that? Amen. Just confess it. Amen. Amen. And the last scripture is Psalms 19, 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. A lot of people know that as a prayer, but don't know where it's at. But the idea is that I want to meditate on the good things of God. Amen. In my bed, I think about his goodness. Throughout the day, I think about his goodness. Amen. I just think about the people I worship with. I said, God, I thank you for the people. I said, we got some good people. Amen. I know you love the Lord. Amen. Let her, I know you love God. Yeah. And I don't know, my Coy, you always talk about how much God means to you. You love the word of God and how he's blessing you. Mm -hmm. I just thank God how he just blesses us. We got good people. I'm not worshiping God by myself. Amen. I'm like, God, nobody's serving you but me. There's a lot of people I know are serving the Lord. Amen. And there's people that are going through more than I'm going through. Amen. You know, I think I'm going through something. God reveals like, you think you're going through something. He shows me other people. People that have lost loved ones. People that have lost children. People that are going through all kinds of mess. And I'm sitting there thinking, why am I crying about it? Because mm -hmm. I thank God right now. I know where my wife is. Mm -hmm. I know where my mom and dad is. Mm -hmm. I know where my brothers are. <laughs> There's no way. To, Doug, I know where Doug's at. Mm -hmm. Doug loved the Lord. He may have been a rascal when he's out in the world. But when he gave his life to God, he gave God all. Mm -hmm. Skip, I hate, Skip wouldn't even let you talk to him. He preached to you. Because mm -hmm. he's, how you doing, Skip? He started preaching from the time I walked in to the time I left. <laughs> the word of God, he was, now people up. their mouths was out of order and they were saying all this, all this garbage and stuff. Not skip, he'd be preaching to you. Mm -hmm. You know, because the word of God was in him so strong. Even when his mind would go, but he still could preach the word of God. So that was in it. So I want to be like that. So full of the word of God, I want to still preach his word. God, I'm not losing my mind. I'm not claiming that. Amen. I'm going to keep my mind. My dad had a good mind until God called him home. So I said, God's going to keep my mind too. I, I, my brother Larry, you hear me, Larry? Don't be talking negative mm. because I do that. God's going to keep our mind. Amen. And I'm, I'm keep my mind on Jesus. I'm going to be fine. Amen. I woke up this morning with my mind. Say it on Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> because I just wake up. If you wake up with Jesus, how are you going to lose it? Mm. I, my mind's on Jesus. That's the best thing you can think yeah. about. So I just thank God for that. But that's my lesson. Let me read the notes here. Guard against words that offend, anger. Mm. Cause discord, tell bearing, or gossip, words that are false. This causes separation from God's presence. You want God's presence in your life? You want to feel God's presence? Amen. Guard your mouth. Amen. Quit saying bad things. Quit you know, getting mad with people and going off on people and slandering people and gossiping against people. Love people. Amen. Pray for people. You know, Reverend Axe up. See these prayers. Let's pray for them right now. Pray for them. 
You know, what, five more trees? That's ten trees. That's praying for <laughs> But it's not that. God wants to bless us. And we need to realize right now that we need to just pray for one another, love one another. And I just thank God for that. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> she goes, whatever. <laughs> I just thank God for what he's doing. We got some good people. I really do. I keep thinking about what you did, the candy. I said, nobody even knew. Nobody even told you to do that. You did out of the goodness of your heart. That coffee stand back there, whatever you just did out of the kindness of your heart. People do stuff out of the car. And that's always bringing bags and stuff right here, here. Everybody. It's not just for me. It's anybody. Everybody's got something you gave them. Amen. And you're like, here, it's, you know, I don't know if it's out of her own money or what it is. It it's out of your own money. Okay. No wonder you don't cry about it. And she, so you, might, you take all your money and give it away, don't you? And love. That's love. Thank God for that. I see your love in my house, all over my house. Mm. But I thank God for that. So we're going to pray for one another right now. What do we have prayers to say? <coughs> I hear you. Who's going to pray for us? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to pray for my uh, next neighbor. And it's best, um, I've known him better 27 years. I've been out there. I know he's, you know, 27 years, you don't know their name? No, no, I know her, I know her, her, her name. Her, her name is Beth. Her okay, we'll pray for Beth and Beth's husband. Yeah, yeah, I... I God knows best husband. Yeah. We say best under her husband. I got home in uh, Sunday, and, and her, her son, Bo, Bo. Had, had, cut her, had cut my grass. Yeah. <laughs> so I walked over there, so I rode over there to, to thank Bo for cutting my grass. And well, he, he was home, so I was talking to Beth. And before I knew, I mean, we were talking, and she said, and then she got, got to talk to her. She, she said something about, because uh, she she's real sick, she's sickly. And I said, well, I, I said, well, let me pray for you. And she said, not because well, she had a house full. She said, no, not that. No, but just that when there's no one here to send me, come on, would you, would you come over and pray for me? So uh, when I told her, well, I'll go to church Wednesday. I'll have a prayer at the church. And her name is Beth. Beth. And her husband? No. Her just husband. pray for Beth. Pray for Beth. Okay. And her son, Bo, yeah. And Bo. Okay. Anybody else? Robin, my wife's friend. Okay. Your wife had a great time on Sunday. She tell you all about it? Oh, yeah. She, said, she goes, that's the best Easter ever. She had a good time. And I'd like to thank you and Tanya for singing that song. That was really a blessing. Okay. What a blessing was, first time my son been in church for years. And he said he enjoyed himself. Yes. So. Pray for Lenny and that household. Yeah, pray for the, ha the Lenny household. Okay. Do you have your hand up? Yeah, I've got an uh, a interview tomorrow. Interview. Okay, pray for your interview. Okay. God will give you favor on in your interview. Yes. Okay, we'll pray for that. Pray for God's favor that He'll get that job. Okay. <laughs> and said, pray for Grant and Haven. Pray for Grant. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Heavenly Father, we just praise and thank you this day. God, there's no God like you, the God that you know our needs. The God, we just look to you right now, believe in you, and touch our lives. And God, to hear our prayers, and to God, to answer our prayers in the name of Jesus. We pray for Grant, God, right now, that you continue to minister to him. Give him the right heart. That God, a heart that will be towards you. That God, that he will not be sorrowful, but God, just to realize that God, that he needs to just trust in you, that you can work miracles in his life. But he needs to surrender all that he is to you right now. May he surrender his whole heart, mind, soul, and strength to you right now. Give Anne the strength that God, that she may be able to just be able to believe and have faith, God, that you're working in her life, working in her home. And we pray you, God, right now, to hear her prayers as she prays for your mighty hand of salvation in her household. We just pray, God, right now for Darius, that God, you're giving favor with those that are interviewing him, that God open up the door that he may find employment. God, just continue to minister in his life right now. We just thank you, God, right now that you're moving mightily. We pray for Beth, God, right now to hear. God, you know, you know her situation, that you're able to move in Beth's life right now, that God, that you minister, God, move mightily, God, with your power and your glory, answer her prayer, move it in her life. God, we just praise you right now. May her heart be towards you. That God, her faith in you will be strong and be strengthened. That God, that you'll be with her. To trust that God, that you're moving in her life right now and in her family. We just praise you, God, right now as you move in this church. That God, that we'll continue to serve you, to love you, that God, to give ourselves to you. That you may bring increase. That God, that you may bring people in. That God, that may be delivered from drugs or alcohol or violence. 
silence or some kind of darkness in their life. And God, those that need to hear your word, that will give their hearts to you. We just pray, God, right now that people may come and hear the word of God. That your presence may be here. That God, that you'll stir up hearts. And that God, that people will give their hearts to you. People that have lost their fervor for you, that have lost that zeal for you. That God, that you're able, God, to, to light the fire in their hearts once again. For you are a consuming fire. And that God, that they may have a fire in their bosom that will burn for you. We just thank you, God, right now for there's no God like you with the power, the might, and the ability to turn hearts and turn lives around and God and draw them to yourself. We just thank you, God, right now. We look to you. Move mighty God on our list. Let us, God, know that you are on the throne and that you're ruling and reigning, that we're your people and that, God, you're moving in our lives, in our homes, on our jobs. God, you're touching our bodies and bringing healing and deliverance. And we just thank you, God, right now that all power is in your hand and we just trust in you. We're your people. We belong to you. That God, that you would show us the Father's care and show us that, God, that you're moving in our lives right now. We cast our cares on you. And that, God, that you would show yourself to be faithful and to answer our prayers in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, right now that you're worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's no God like you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just pray for God for us. Lord, house of God, that you touch the man that once again, to have that fire for you. They've lost it. But God, I'm praying right now that God, even once again, has a fear of God in their hearts and lives, you, that they will once again give their hearts back to you, you and live for you. Touch them, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, we did our lesson without the scripture on the wall. It went well. Thank you, Lord. And we hope by next week that we'll get that done. Like I said, sometimes it's out of our control. We do our best, but sometimes, like you said, we're subject to, we put that guy come from the elevator, inspect on Tuesday, he never showed up. I left my number on the, on the door. He never called me, so maybe something happened. He did say 19th, right? Yeah. And I was here. I was at 8 o'clock, 12. So me and Jesus had a good old time. Aww. I bought, took a bottle of water off the table. Okay, praise God for that. Mm -hmm. So thank God, for Mike. It's good to see you. I know you yeah. and Crystal can't come at the same time. Mm -hmm. but so it's just good having you here. I know Sarah is bound. You can't go out and get out of the house. So my heart goes out to Sarah because I know she's like sitting out. You know, so when you get your van... I know you'll be happy. Definitely. So you'll come to church with Mike shouting because he got his van. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't, don't forget uh, Eric and Tellus. They've been sick. They I still wasn't still sick? I forgot that they were sick. Aww. I'm out of texting again. I, I talked to Tellus today, and, and he's feeling a lot better. He said he's going back to work tomorrow. He was sick, what, since Saturday or something like Sunday. that? Sunday. I texted him Sunday, but I, I thought he'd be better by now. <coughs> okay. But thank God for my Bible class, your faithfulness. You guys are faithful. Thank God for that. So we just go. Rest of the week, have a great time. And we'll be back on, what, Sunday morning? Yes, thank God for that. And, uh, Father, we just thank you right now for those that are here that will continue to love and serve you. To God, to be faithful to you and trust in you. We just thank you, God, right now. You're worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.